are many people who have overcome disabilities to triumph in many areas of their life, including sports. Watch this. You are looking at a tape of my next guest, Dennis, running beside former world record holder Carl Lewis, who at the time was the fastest man on earth. Dennis held the record, the world record, in the 100-meter dash at the Paralympics, and his time was less than two seconds slower than Carl Lewis's. But there's one big difference between Dennis and Carl. Dennis only has one leg. Let's hear his story, okay? Dennis, come on out here. <laughs> Welcome hey, to the Chris, show. Again. Thanks. So, Dennis, tell us what happened that caused you to lose your leg. Uh, well, I had gone to a, a hockey game, which was on the island. It happened to be a Ranger-Islander playoff game. And the, the Rangers won that night, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> In any event, um, when the game was over, usually when I'm on the island, I say the Islanders won, so it's, you know, okay. So, in any event, I was, um, after the uh, hockey game was over, I left to go home with a friend of mine, and when we got out to the car and got into the car, uh, the car wouldn't start. And I looked over, he had the light switch out, so I pushed it back in and uh, it didn't start. And finally, somebody jump-started the car, and then we left the Coliseum parking lot and got onto Meadowbrook Parkway, and he had a standard car. So when he got into the right lane, he let the clutch out of the car too quickly, and it stalled in the right lane. So, and I see so many people doing this today. Uh, the, I thought the logical thing to do would be to get out and push it off to the side of the right. road. By the time I got out of the car, it was bumper to bumper traffic. You know, it's only going to take 30 seconds what could possibly happen. So I went out and I started to push the car off to the side of the road and that was the last thing I remember. Um, my next recollection was looking up and seeing the bottom of a car, what I thought was the wheel wells, and just feeling ice cold rain like rushing into my ear. And what I had found out was that I had actually been hit from behind by two cars and I was physically trapped under the second car. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that, that was the accident. That was the accident, and then, you know, I, um, my next, after that, you know, your body, I guess, goes into shock from losing so much blood and so on and so forth. I woke up at Nassau County Medical Center, um, and with a doctor, a group of doctors, it was a triage team running around, and you can just hear things going on, and then one of the doctors coming up and getting in my face, you know, so I could understand what he was saying, and then right. saying to me, we're going to try to do everything we can, but there's a good chance we're going to have to surgically remove your leg. And then all of a sudden... And what went through your mind at that point? Well, at that moment, you know, you, I just remember closing my eyes and just saying, this, this isn't happening. You know, this is a nightmare. I'm going to wake up. I mean, it happens to us all when, you know, at night you right. wake up to a dream you think is happening for a split second. Did they then, have to get your consent to, to amputate your leg? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, a, it was a decision that had to be made. How did you make yeah. that decision? Well, I was fortunate that there was a nurse who was actually working there who uh, went to my family and said that um, they should amputate my leg. Because what they tried to do was to take a vein graft here from my mm -hmm. arm to restore the blood flow, and that failed. Right. And so the doctor then came back, and the nurse uh, helped me make the decision, actually. So, so what... You said it was one of the hardest decisions that you've ever had to make. Sure. Yes. Yeah, of and now, how long ago was this, Dennis? That was in 1984. 1984. Yeah. And so now, since then, I please give us a synopsis of what you've done, because it's remarkable. Well, it, after the accident, um, you know, most people, you go through this, you, you're not really exposed to people with disabilities growing up. I never right. saw an amputee before in my life, and uh, I thought I was going to be, you know, in a wheelchair the rest of my life, not, not be able to get up and, and even uh, run or walk at all. And um, a friend of mine dragged me out to the international games, which changed my life. I mean, I walked out there reluctantly, because in my mind I said to myself, right. what do I want? I don't want to see disabled people compete. You know, that's now known as the Paralympics, the Paralympic Games. That's right. And that was held on Long Island, and that event saved my life. I walked out there, I saw a guy high jump over a bar with one leg. He high jumped six feet ten. You know, hopping on one leg. So that changed your whole perspective and everything? Yeah, instantly. I mean, through, through the athletics, you know, it was, that was my savior, you know, and um, being able to get up on an artificial leg and learn to walk again was a chore. And then four years later, in Seoul, Korea, at the 1988 Paralympic Games is when I set a world record in the 100, 2, and 4. Uh, my, thank you. My God. Of which, of which I only have one world record left, and that's the 400, and I ran that in 56.2 for a 400 meter. In 1992, I lost two of those world records, uh, 
to a young man who's missing both his legs as a bilateral amputee who wow. beat my world record by one-tenth. Uh. Oh! <laughs> So. One tenth of a point. I mean, that's. Oh. Excuse me. So now, and you've gone on your personal life. You're married. You have a family. Yeah, I have two beautiful children now, and uh, you know, it's been just incredible. You know, the thing that I think needs to be uh, brought to everybody's attention: mm -hmm. the leg that I'm wearing right now, and the designs that I have. Um, this technology has enabled me to go that fast. Right. You know, and that's that's important. And the other thing to keep in mind: this is the leg. This is the leg I use for sprinting which was specifically designed for sprinting leg, for, for you know, doing 100 meters. I got a spike plate on the bottom, which allows me to grip the track, and this whole thing collapses under my weight as I sprint forward. That's great. And uh, most people get a misconception that these artificial legs are just for athletes, when in reality, this thing can store and release energy, you know, so that it enables all people to walk. And when you take into consideration that the majority of the amputees out there are over the age of 50 years old, they benefit from this. And our, our healthcare system, a lot of our healthcare system is not paying for this. Mm. That and also the liner has enabled me to go, it's made out of a urethane. It's called a tech liner. Right. This material, I haven't had a breakdown or a pressure sore in over three years now. Isn't and that I fabulous? Used to get, when I used to train, I used to get breakdowns like that. Yeah. And that has enabled me to go and I can walk out and just walk and walk and walk without feeling anything. I mean, I, I think that this is great technology, but I think, Dennis, that your determination yeah. is what really, I think, got okay. you where you are today yeah. and made you so remarkable, right? That's true. That's fabulous. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Um, the question I have for you is, um, do you go around um, the country and talk to people that have the same handicap as you, you know, because sometimes when people get, you know, handicapped, they kind of lose kind of right. confidence They're in themselves and they get depressed and stuff like that. I wondered if you, if you go around and talk about this. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and, you know, to come on this show, we're, we're reaching six million people. That's right. You know, there's somebody out there that's sitting there that doesn't realize this technology is available, number one, because, you know, the healthcare system, they just say, okay, this is what you're going to have and that's yeah. it. And, uh, but you want to so, let people know that they're, that's, yeah, I mean, it's that's, available. You don't know what it's like. I mm. mean, to be able to change somebody's life yeah. you know, that calls you on the phone, we're going to get phone calls from this. You're going to get inundated with phone calls. I hope it gets swamped. And yep. what's going to happen is these people are going to say, hey, I never even knew that that, that was available. And, you know, right. to be able to, to change a person's life, it's the greatest gift that you ever. could ever ask That's for. That's right. But to answer this gentleman's question, you do lecture, do a lot of that. you do speak with, yeah, uh, with absolutely. students. And, you know, and the other thing yeah. is to educate okay. kids, people that are able-bodied about disabilities. And I've been mm -hmm. fortunate that in Nassau County, uh, I was able to, since 1989, I, we've given probably close to 300, 400 programs on disability awareness, which was sponsored by the county executive out there, Tom Galata. So we've been good. very fortunate to be able That's to go out terrific. and do that. It's That's right, Dennis. Okay, good. What an inspiration to all of us. And next, a ski racer who had his Olympic dreams dashed in a horrible accident tells us how he still flies down the hill. Get ready. 70 miles per hour, despite the fact that he's paralyzed from the waist down. We'll meet him when we return.